Hello and welcome to The Day Ahead. It is Thursday, March 17th. I'm Andrew Gagan. Well, to the day's top story, interest rates and we have liftoff. The FOMC raised its policy interest rate by one quarter percentage point. The economy is very strong and against the backdrop of an extremely tight labor market and high inflation, the committee anticipates that ongoing increases in the target range for the federal funds rate will be appropriate. In addition, we expect to begin reducing the size of our balance sheet at a coming meeting. So, as expected, the U.S. Fed Reserve hiking rates for the first time since 2018 as the central bank moves to combat record high inflation and growing uncertainty over the economic impact stemming from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. All members, bar one, agreed to the 25 basis point hike, with St. Louis Fed President James Bullard, the only dissenter, voting for a more aggressive 50-point move. While liftoff was nearly 100% priced in by the market, focus was on the all-important dot plots of what's to come. Fed Chair Jerome Powell again reiterating, while the Fed does not have a crystal ball, more rate hikes are on the cards. The way we're thinking about this is that every meeting is a live meeting, and uh, we're going to be looking at evolving conditions. And uh, if we do conclude that it would be appropriate to, to move more quickly to remove accommodation, then we'll do so. I can't be perfectly specific about it, but that's certainly a possibility as we as we go through the year. Firm focus was on the economic impact of the war in Ukraine, with Chair Powell saying supply disruptions stemming directly from the conflict have pushed up global food and energy prices, which in turn has had an impact on inflation in the U.S. You're seeing uh, supply chain issues around shipping and around, you know, lots of um, countries and companies and people not wanting to to touch ru- uh, Russian goods. So that's that's going to mean more more tangled supply chains. So that could actually push out the relief we were expecting on supply chains generally. Looking ahead, very much left to be desired when it comes to quantitative tightening, though policymakers said a reduction of the nine trillion dollar balance sheet is coming soon. Say we're now in a position to finalize and implement that plan so that we're actually beginning runoff at a coming meeting, and that could come as soon as our next meeting in May. That's not a decision that we've made, but I would say that that's how that's how well uh, our discussions went in the last two days. So, how did equities respond? Wall Street ending the session higher on the back of the Fed's decision, with all three of the majors in the black in a choppy session, with the yield curve flattening sharply. Analysts, though, remain cautious, with many of the markets saying this looks like a central bank intent on causing a recession in a bid to stamp out the fiery inflation problem. Historically, a more aggressive Fed has seen a solid gain in equities, with the S&P returning an average of 7.7% in the first year the Fed hikes rates. That's according to Deutsche Bank data of hiking cycles since 1955. Looking at the FX reaction in the wake of the move by the Fed, major currencies were mostly higher against the US dollar. The Aussie rallying from a low of 72 US cents to close close to 73 cents. It has since come back. Well, greater monetary policy certainty buoyed cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin up more than 4.5% to sit comfortably above $41,000. Turning more globally, Ukraine and Russia are showing signs of progress in negotiations, with the Kremlin saying a proposal for Ukraine to become a neutral country but retaining its own armed forces would be viewed as a compromise. That statement was welcomed by Ukrainian President Zelensky as more realistic. Elsewhere, China remains in focus with a broad tightening of COVID lockdowns. In light of the impact on growth and a hit to supply chains, China's central bank has vowed to support financial markets and the economy. So what does this all mean for the open here at home? Well, SPY futures, they've uh, started very positively to the day there, uh, initially dipping after that uh, in response to the Fed statement, but uh, currently up close to 1.5%. Now, commodities again in focus with oil retreating to a three-week low as markets reacted to some positive progress in Ukraine-Russia peace talks. Additionally, Libya has urged OPEC and its allies to increase supply faster 
and US crude inventory surprised to the upside last week. Gold steadied on the back of a weaker greenback after the Fed rate hike. And copper rose 1.7%, while iron ore surged close to 8% to $145 a tonne as China reassured markets it has measures in place to boost economic growth. Looking to the day ahead, the latest employment print for February will be closely watched, which is widely expected to be a solid print, the reference period being before the floods hit Australia's east coast. Analysts are looking for a lift of around 40,000 jobs, although up to 60,000 is a possibility. The unemployment rate is expected to ease to 4% or perhaps even lower, taking it into the high threes. And that is your day ahead. See you again tomorrow.